and, and Iran, you know, was one of the biggest oil producers along with Saudi and, and Iraq. So um, already you can see that there's, you know, the, the, the possibility, the potential for conflict uh, over oil is already great, you know, in World War II. Now, one of the biggest developments, one of the biggest factors in World War II, obviously, is going to be the Holocaust. Um, this, this, you know, we, we mentioned Hitler's ideology uh, blamed Jewish people for all of these problems in Germany. You know, it has all these stereotypes, Jewish bankers, and, you know, it was just this, this really ugly racism. And it, as a result of that, you had the Holocaust in Germany, uh, where the German government and governments associated with the Nazis, governments, they took over the Italians, and, uh, you know, there were Holocaust, there were, there were concentration camps all over Europe, uh, would, would start rounding up Jewish people. And not just Jewish people, they round up gypsies and they round up disabled people and people who they call communists and socialists and, and homosexuals. So the Holocaust is, is huge. But the biggest group individually were Jewish people and, and about six million were rounded up and, and then, you know, uh, killed. So that was, you know, obviously a, an immense and, and horrific uh, humanitarian catastrophe. And it gave impetus to the idea that Jews should have a safe space, a homeland, uh, because they had been all over in Russia, in Germany, in Poland, all over the place. And the idea grew that, okay, you know, there should be a homeland so that they can, you know, have their own area. And that obviously would be Israel, based on these old Zionist ideas, based on the idea that there had been Jews before, that there are, you know, these kind of biblical claims to it. So um, more and more Jews began to move in to Palestine, right? I got a bunch of maps here, and I'm going to, you know, use those to some extent because it's sometimes easier just to look at it. So um, this is uh, 1947. This is just right after World War II ended, and you have land ownership, right? Now, so you can see that this area is still heavily Arab. Uh, Jewish lands are darker, and this kind of lighter orange or brown or whatever it is were, were Palestinian lands, right? So the area was still, you know, over 80% Arab and the population was still about 80% Arab, right? But more Jews started to move in. And so the United Nations, which was established after World War II, tried to develop a partition plan, a, a way to make this area a homeland for both Jews and the Palestinians who are already there. So they came up with this, which created a, a, a roughly a 50-50 split between the two, even though the population was still heavily Arab, right? Now, that would lead to uh, a, a war. Um, Jewish settlers began to, came in, to come in and forcibly remove Palestinians. And so you had these Jewish kind of paramilitary groups, the best known were Haganah, which would later become the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, and then groups like the Stern Gang and Ergun, who were often referred to as terrorist groups, which were led by people who would later become like the prime ministers of Israel, began attacking uh, and forcing out Palestinians from their homelands, from their villages. And in fact, uh, they attacked the British too. Remember at the beginning, I said Britain had a mandate uh, from the League of Nations over Israel. So Britain was actually in control. They were actually in charge of Palestine, of Israel. But the Jewish groups like Haganah, Sterngug, and Aragon began to attack the British too. And, and in fact, blew up the King David Hotel. There was a massive attack on the King David Hotel, which is where the British administrators were living, were staying. And that's where their headquarters were. And well over 100 people were killed. And so the British left, you know, it, it worked, right? They, they drove them out. Now, at that point, then, the, uh, the uh, removal of Palestinians got even, you know, more uh, rapid, became more rapid, became bigger. And Palestinians were soon removed from Palestine in huge numbers, right? These are some maps of, of Palestinian refugees. So they were forced out. They went to places like Lebanon and Jordan. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, these are it's basically the same map. These are villages which were depopulated, villages where Palestinians had lived but had been removed. And Arabs referred to this as the Nakba. Nakba means like cataclysm or catastrophe. 
um, after Israel, after the Holocaust, um, and then you have this removal of, of Palestinians. The United Nations in, uh, in 1948 voted to create a new country, a new state, Israel, all right? So Israel is now a, a country which is essentially a Jewish state. So the uh, removal, uh, the depopulation uh, picked up uh, even you know more rapidly, and so this is you know the depopulation in 1948, where settlements were, the people removed, they were sent elsewhere, and the villages were just you know destroyed, right? Um, the numbers I've seen different numbers, but somewhere probably around maybe three quarters of a million, maybe 750,000 Palestinian Arabs were removed from Palestine from the, from their areas. Uh, that was about half of Palestine's pre-war population. So about half of the population uh, from you know, 1940 had been removed and sent abroad. They became refugees and they're still Palestinian refugees all over uh, the Middle East. They were uh, sent abroad. They were expelled uh, from their homes. About four to 600 Palestinian villages were basically destroyed, raised during the war. Uh, Palestine was kind of gone, uh, even though the population had been 80% Arab, uh, this, this war, uh, you know, really kind of just removed massive numbers of Palestinians, probably, you know, I, I, anywhere from 600, I've seen 600,000, I've seen a million. So it's a huge number and destroyed uh, uh, massive uh, numbers of villages. Um, and, you know, about 80% of Palestinians, ultimately, as this played out well into like 1948, 1949, uh, about 80% of Palestinians um, left their homelands or had their homes destroyed, right? And so this is the Nakba. And it's something um, that I I Arabs still remember, still talk about, all right? These are various maps, and we can go back to these later, but these are maps uh, of Palestinian loss of land. This is 1946, which was about, like I said, at least 80, 20, probably more than that, Arab, uh, Palestinian. This was the UN plan, which was more like 50-50. And the other part of that, this is the point is Israel gets access to the water, and there's not much water there, so that's important as well. And then later on, we'll talk about 1967 and, 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 and thereafter, all right? So you have a, 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 an increasing crisis in that region. Other Arab states defended the Palestinians, right? 